Walter Crosby with Helix Sales Development, your host of Sales and Cigars. So today, my guest again is Matt Anderson. We're on how to think about marketing is the series I'm doing with Matt. And today's episode, I think, is pivotal for business owners and entrepreneurs who are struggling with uh, their marketing and not understanding exactly why they're, they're, they're struggling. So Matt and I talk about the, the four types of of entrepreneurs that come to uh, a marketing meeting to talk about their situation, right? And there, there's there's four types that we get into, you know, the innovator, the imitator, the, t- the technician, and the optimizer. We talk about how that, why that matters and what they bring to the party. But most importantly, we talk about the things that the business owner must. It is like your responsibility to bring to that marketing agency, to your own marketing people, to be able to talk about who you need to reach, what you're really selling, how you're gonna position it, and what that offer looks like, and most importantly, why. What's, what's your company about? What's your vision? And these things seem superficial, but they're not. We're gonna dig into them one by one as we progress through this. So go grab a cigar, grab a cocktail, strap in. It's going to be a great episode if you're frustrated with marketing. Thanks. So, uh, uh, Matt, I appreciate you coming back for for a second edition of How to Think About Marketing. Yeah, you haven't scared me off yet. <laughs> uh, well, that's, uh, that's saying something. Um, so... We we've been talking about uh, talking about marketing. We talked about last time at a high level about what what marketing is and what it isn't, and how how we should be thinking about it at that thirty thousand foot level. And and what we want to do going forward with these episodes is to is to think more um, strategic for the for the business owner. What do they need to be thinking about? What do they need to be doing? And there's lots of things that we do as entrepreneurs. Um, that we that we think are the right thing to do, but are often wrong, and we learn those lessons the hard way. I know I have. So when we were talking um, a, a week or so ago, you shared some inside baseball that that uh, and, and this inside baseball pissed me off, frustrated me, but it also gave me that aha moment. So can you share with the with the audience what that what that was? Yeah. So. Um... I think it's it's uh, well understood that the relationship between an ad agency or a marketing consultant or an internal marketing team and a business owner can often be really contentious. Um, you know, I've I've been through it in my career where you do everything that you can for the client, you're doing your best, and they there's just you just can't make them happy. Um, you've also you know launched campaigns that we were really confident would work. And uh, they just don't go anywhere. Um, and then on the other hand, you know, you've got, you know, numerous clients who are over the moon happy, thrilled with what you created for them. Uh, you know, you've created tons of, of value. You redo a company's brand and it sells for, you know, $10 million more the next year. Uh, you know, all sorts of, you know, incredible results. And it's frustrating to the marketer and it's frustrating to the client why it seems such like such a crapshoot. And what I told you last week was that in my experience, the biggest difference between marketing that thrills everyone and marketing that falls on its face isn't, you know, the person in the agency working on the project. Uh, it isn't how creative they felt that morning. It isn't how much bourbon they, they consumed that afternoon. It's not, you know, what side of the bed they got up on. The biggest difference, you know, the single biggest factor in, in all of that throughout my career has been what the client brings to the table. And, you know, I know it's kind of controversial uh, to, and it might kind of seem like passing the buck to say, well, it's the client's fault. Uh, and, you know, often, you know, there, there are certainly cases where the agency doesn't do what it needs to do. But, uh, you know, I'd say that in a lot of cases, the clients don't, hold up their end of the bargain. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's just a couple of common themes. So, so Matt, can you kind of unpack what those, what that issue is or kind of help us understand what we need to do? Sure thing. Um, th- there are really kind of four different types of clients that 
with the best of intentions, you know, run into marketing and yet end up getting in their way. You know, the first I'd call the innovator, right? What makes for a really talented entrepreneur is the ability to find a solution to a common problem that other people haven't discovered before, right? The, the, a lot of people will start a business or create a product because they are convinced that there's a better way to solve this problem. And that allows them to raise money. It allows them to bring a product to market. But the very thing that makes them a great product innovator often gets in the way of equipping their marketing team to be successful. What innovators do is they try to sell what they know the customer needs. And that's what they build their message around. And the problem is that they end up spending years trying to convince the customer that they're stupid and they should just see them, see it their way, see, it, see, see the brilliance of the entrepreneur's solution. And what you need to do to be successful in marketing and sales is find a way to sell the customer what they want while giving them what they need. That's where a successful business comes from. So the second kind of kind right. of troublesome client, I'd say, is what I would call the imitator. Uh, it's someone who's read two or three marketing books and is convinced that the story that's in those marketing books is the way to go. Uh, like 10 years ago when um, Made to Stick was really popular, for about a year and a half, I got clients who would say, I need a message that is clear and concrete and, you know, all the catchwords from that book. And yeah, you need a message that does those things, but that doesn't tell you what you need to say. Um, and, and so you're optimizing around the wrong thing. Uh, you know, the other kind of imitator is someone who's like, I've got this lawn care company and I really love what the Apple brand looks like, right? Yeah, Apple is a great, you know, brand to take lessons from, but it might not be appropriate to your audience, your market, your product, your service. Um, and so, mm -hmm. you know, you, you want to be rather careful in, what, in how you set your expectations and what you're asking for. Because what you ask your agency for, they're gonna give, give to you, right? It's not profitable to fight you. Uh, you know, you, you wanna give the client what they want. Um, and uh, even if it's not always to, you know, their, their greatest success. Um, you know, the third kind of troublesome client, I would say, is what I would call the optimizer. Uh, I've had a number of clients through the years who are engineers, scientists, uh, operations folks, and they have made their career on being very precise, in being able to have control from the beginning to the end. Um, and for folks like this, marketing is often really frustrating because it's imprecise. It really bothers them that if you show an ad to 100,000 people, maybe only 50,000 of them are in your ideal audience, and maybe only 10% of those could ever be your customer, right? It feels like a lot of wasted motion, a lot of wasted energy. You know, the truth is, at the end of the day, you show the ad to 100,000 people, you might get 3,000 clients, and that might be enough to make your business millions of dollars. Uh, it works in the aggregate. It doesn't sure. work, you know, step by step. Um, and, uh, you know, the same thing. Uh, you have to test messages to know if they really resonate. You can only do so much research. Uh, and, you know, that bothers the optimizer, too. You know, when you have an ad that flops... Uh, that's a success if you get a good lesson from it that makes your next ad more successful. Um, but, you know, if you're trying sure. to hit the bullseye every time, you're going to be endlessly frustrated with marketing. And then finally, there's the tactician. You know, the person who's like, I know exactly what I need. I need to be in social because that's what I hear at the country club. Or, you know, I need, you know, I, my business isn't doing well. It must be the website. Or... You know, I hear SEO is the latest thing, and I like the idea of getting customers for free. Let's do that. Um, and there, you're going to be able to find no shortage of people who will sell you that. Um, but at the end of the day, you end up with a bunch of uh, tactics that are assembled piecemeal that don't work together. I talked to a potential client last uh, a couple days ago that was in the same boat. You know, none of their marketing individually was done incompetently, but none of it worked together to generate leads. And they were wondering, well, why am I spending all this money and not getting any leads? I've got a great product. I've got a great market. What's wrong? Well, what's wrong is you've got a pile of tactics that don't work together. It's like an orchestra playing two different songs uh, at different speeds and different tempos, and, and none of it's really coordinated. Yeah, exactly. Attention. But what's, what I think is important to understand about each of these personas, you might if you're listening to this, recognize yourself in that, is they all come from the best of intentions, right? 
there's they're an entrepreneur or a business owner or a marketing manager who's doing their best uh, and they just don't know what they need to give to a marketing team in order to be successful, right? And agencies uh, and professional marketers are usually pretty bad at drawing that out of the client uh, because, again, they're trying to See, sell. But that's, that's the part. That part right there, Matt, right? I mean, th- those four personas, like we can see ourselves there. That's a great point. We can see who, what we're bringing to the party. But I think the thing that business owners don't didn't understand or that we, we can emphasize here, at least it was from my experience, was that we didn't know that you guys don't necessarily say, wait a minute, no, 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 right? We got to back up the, the bus back up here and we just expect you guys to do that. And that's not what often, that's not what happens often. Is that fair? That's definitely true. Now, I've been fortunate that each of the agencies I've worked for uh, and, you know, the way I work with clients is to, you know, if I don't have confidence that it's going to work for them, I'm not going to try to sell it. Um, But that's really rare. Uh, A lot of clients I've had throughout my career have come to me after working with three or four or five different agencies and getting nowhere and spending hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars uh, in, in the process. And the reason is that those agencies either d- weren't equipped to recognize that what the client wanted wasn't going to work, um, or they didn't care because they needed to sell a website this week to keep the developers busy. And they needed to sell a new logo because their designers are light on work. And, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to make payroll on Friday. And uh, there's, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of challenge in that. Um, so, you know, it's not all the client's fault. There's a lot of bad marketers out there, too, um, it, that with the best of intentions, you know, either are ill-equipped to do what the client needs or ill-equipped to help them uh, translate their business into a form that can be effectively marketed. Uh, but, yeah, that's very common. I, I, I think identifying these these four types and helping, you know, the way you describe the innovator and the the imitator, the optimizer, and then that tactician, that that allows us to kind of put ourselves in that box and like, oh shit, I do a little of that and I do yeah. some of that and and I and I probably did that. So, you know, I I think we can talk about these as we progress through these conversations, mm-hmm. but um, maybe we can land on this part. Um, and tell me if I'm wrong, right? Because if we need to go a different direction, because sure what we're really trying to do is is is, is help help the, the the entrepreneur listening, that business owner listening, who's frustrated with marketing. Um, what what do they need to do to be better prepared, or to understand if they're partnering with the right people? I mean, how do they know that? And but what do they really need to think about? Yeah, differently. Well, so I think there's, there's really two questions there, right? One, I think, is what does the entrepreneur or the business owner need to bring to the table? What is their responsibility in creating successful marketing? And then secondly is, you know, how do you recognize who can help you with that? Uh, so the first question. So right, let's go with the first one. Yeah. So I am absolutely convinced that there are, that the, the, the heart of, the creative process for an entrepreneur, what the entrepreneur's particular genius is, is 90% marketing. Um, You know, if if you look at someone like a Steve Jobs or an Elon Musk, right, they didn't write any of their ads. They didn't, you know, they may, they're, they're probably have more marketing talent than any of the marketers they ever worked with. But their genius was their ability to create a vision for the company that others could take and turn into effective ads or great websites or, you know, all the things that, that end up selling. So, you know, what, what is the entrepreneur's responsibility? What do they need to bring to the table? Well, first, they need to identify who we're marketing to, right? They, the, the, the core, in order to get a product or a service, in order to create something truly remarkable, you are creating it for a particular audience, for a particular kind of person. Now, it might grow and expand and, you know, become, you know, far bigger than you ever dreamed. But it all starts with a core insight that 
there's a particular problem out, a particular person out there, a particular type of person, a particular kind of company, and they have this set of problems or they have this set of unmet desires. And we're going to really understand who that is and what their problem is and what we're trying to, and, and you know, how, how we're trying to help them. You know, and then there's the what. You know, what is the solution we're trying to sell them? Uh, how is it going to be priced? How is it going to be, you know, uh, what is that, that relationship with the customer going to look like? You know, so, and, and what are the features we're going to build into that? What are we going to say yes to? What are we going to say no to? You know, that's part of building uh, an effective product, right? That's, that's the entrepreneur's job. But it's also the core of your marketing message. You know, the who you're trying to help, what their problems are, and what the solution is. That's the core of your marketing message. And, and until you bring that to the table, and until you understand what that really is, your marketing team's going to be hard-pressed to, to solve that for you. They can create the best ad in the world, but, you know, if, if the core message isn't there they're not going to step in and create a new product for you, right? They're not going to step in usually and say, you're selling to the wrong audience. You need to be selling to the audience over there. Those are the starting points that they take from the entrepreneur. Because they, the marketing people don't know. They don't have the vision. And right. it's our, our responsibility to bring that vision and break it down and be clear about that, like who that is, what it is we're delivering, what, what, what problems that solves, what, what, what desires it fulfills, right? What, depending yep. upon which way you're going there, right? I mean, those are the things that we really need to do. And I think, I think that, those, those things, like defining who we are and then thinking about what it is that we got to bring to the table because what, what you're really doing there, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but we're identifying the persona, the ideal client profile, the dot, like avatar, whatever, however what language we want to use. If we don't give you that, you're just throwing darts into the ocean. Right. That's right. And, and there's and, no way to hit it. Yeah, totally. Um, and, you know, this is where some of the, the problems come in, right? You know, sometimes the entrepreneur is just wrong about who the customer is. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the innovator, right? They're trying to sell the customer what they need, not what they want. Um, so that's why I usually want to make sure to talk to the sales team because they have more direct contact with the customer. I like to interview customers to get, you know, more, you know, to round out that information. But frankly, not that many agencies do it because it's, you know, the clients can't afford to pay them to do it. Um, and so, you know, ultimately that falls back on you. And so I'd encourage a little humility from the entrepreneur's perspective to, you know, try to make sure that what you're what you're saying is is tested from what the customer is actually telling you, not uh, what you wish the customer wanted, um, or you know, trying to justify what you wanted to create, and there's not really a market for it. Um, I think. Well, that's a really good point. That's, no, there's a really good point there. I don't want to gloss over. No. What we think it should be, and what um, you know, what we what we want it to be. That, that can get in our way. That can be a real a hurdle for that entrepreneur to take a step back, right? It's like when we have to be when we have to be humble enough to know we're wrong in dealing with a client. Yeah, like it's the same thing here. We want it to be this guy, but it's not. It's this person that we have to talk to. Yeah, and I mean, and, and, and I think we got to get. Yeah, I had a client. Um that comes to mind to very bright, uh, had, you know, had held very high positions in very big companies is, was the buyer for the kind of product he wanted to create. So, you know, you'd think if anyone understood the customer, it would be him. Right. But he created such a brilliant solution, uh, that he was convinced it should be an easy yes on the first sales conversation. And this is not a small, product, uh, you know, that, that it has big impact throughout the organization. Um, and so, you know, they were endlessly frustrated that they weren't closing deals on the first sales conversation. Um, well, you know, it turns out the buying cycle needed to be about nine months and a bunch of other departments needed to be involved. You know, that, yeah, the person who makes the final decision may be your persona, but you didn't have a full enough understanding of who you needed an influence to effectively market the product. Um, 
and you know that's just a small example but uh you know that's where i think on both sides of this marketing relationship the client and the agency a lot of humility is needed well but, but you raise another point that i think we can get into in future conversations because you, you know you said it would be great to talk to actual clients to understand what they see but we also want to understand their decision criteria who yeah. all the stakeholders are if it's a complex sale um and that's something that a, a a sales team can can gather that information and frankly they should have that yeah because their discovery process should include you know who's part of the decision process who cares about this besides the ceo or the whoever the whoever they think the decision maker is but uh, but who else is involved but then like how are they going to make that decision what's the criteria yeah and i and I, a thing i've seen from from my perspective from just the sales side take the marketing out of it just for a moment there's a there's a a, a lack of trust between a leadership role a ceo a president a business owner and what the salespeople, the feedback that they're giving to that to that decision maker, right within their own team, totally. like they're they're not buying that, that this is a longer sales cycle. It's not a one closed deal. We we got to go get all these people. So it goes back to your idea of humility, that everybody's got to be open and honest and have these these transparent conversations and be able to say, great product, we can sell it, no problem, but. It isn't a one close deal. We're, we're going to have a series of meetings with a group of people and we can bring them along. Yeah. Um, and that, and then the, the marketing needs to be in alignment there. So, yeah. I mean, this all kind of fits together when done well, but it really requires a lot of information on the front end. Yeah, totally. Um, and, and related to that, there's two other things that I think the client needs to bring to the table. You know, the first two are who we're marketing to and what we're selling. The third one is how are we selling it, right? What, what's our distribution method? Is it sitting on a shelf in a store or is it being sold direct to the consumer? Um, how are we pricing it, right? Uh, you know, if you tell an, your ad agency that we need to increase sales of this uh, soft drink and so we're going to do a promotion, uh, buy two, get one free, right? They'll be able to do, market that really effectively, but they're not going to generally come to the table saying, you know what you should do? You should cut your price by 30% uh, for the next couple of weeks if, you're, if you really want to move units. And if they're telling you that, you should probably be pretty suspicious because they don't have enough knowledge about your business likely to be able to be in a position to you know, make that recommendation, right? So you need to come to the table with yeah. offers. And if you haven't created an offer yet, uh, you need to work with someone who can help you create those kind of offers and package your product to sell and package it in a way that the business model makes sense. Um, you know, I've, I've had yep. several clients throughout the years whose business model just at the end of the day wouldn't work. And no matter how much attention the ads got, it didn't create the kind of relationship with the customer that would enable them to be profitable. Um, and, and so, you know, that's, certainly, you know, and usually the client's responsibility. I don't think that should be controversial, but most people don't even think about that as part of their marketing no. message. Uh, and then the last thing is the why, right? Shoot. Your vision, your mission, your values, um, the heart of the company. That's where your brand personality needs to come from. That's uh, where the tone of voice and the ethos needs to come from, right? A, a talented marketer can take that, that information and create a compelling brand character for you and can write and do videos and shoot pictures and all of that, you know, that, that will establish the kind of relationship you want to have with your customer. But if, you, if you're not clear on what that is and you're just trying to figure out how I can move product today, uh, you're going to end up with a bunch of marketing that year after year goes in various directions and doesn't add up to much. Um, it, you know, the, the most successful marketing, the most successful clients I've ever worked with had a very clear vision on each of those four things, right? Why are we doing it? How are we doing it? What are we selling and who are we selling it to? Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's really the heart of, of your vision and that's your responsibility. And one of my great pleasures is I get the opportunity these days to work with entrepreneurs to actually figure out what that vision is 
and um, help make some of those decisions if they're not clear. Usually, a lot of those decisions have already been made. They just haven't been expressed in a form that marketing people can work with it. And so, you know, that's where like yeah. the facilitation process you went through comes in. Um, it's really a, a process of working with the client. Yeah, and what you shared here today, um, you know, the 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 four types of entrepreneurs that come to this and start. I'm looking at it as the baggage we bring. Yeah. Right. Is that 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 innovator imitator? Right. Those are that's baggage that we gotta we gotta clear out. But the but the who the what the why the how like all of that. If if we if we come to that thinking something, your facilitation process is going to help pull that out. Pull out a thread. It's like, well, that doesn't sound quite right. It doesn't lie in here, right? And then, yeah. then you can do it. But if we haven't done the work to talk, to talk about it and, and get that, that messaging right, the marketing's not going to work. But also for, 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 from a sales perspective, it's not going to work either because we need that story yeah. to be able to give to the salespeople to have them go out, right? That's another mistake business owners make is that they assume the salesperson is going to know what to say. The marketing people don't know, right? And you can't articulate your vision and the who, the how, what, and the how. You, the salespeople aren't going to figure it out either. So I, I think we'll dive into all these things as we progress through these conversations about how to think about marketing. But um, just just those, those, those ideas that we've shared here today, I think sales business owners can start to think about it. Salespeople can start to think about it and make inquiries of their, of the boss, of the CEO and say, what, what are we thinking here? Right. Is this offer really tied to something real? Yeah, totally. Um, it, you know, I think maybe if we're going to end on an encouraging note, um, the good news is that it's not that hard to get those things right. Um, you know, if you already have customers today, uh, just interviewing your best customers with the right kind of kinds of questions, you will learn enormous amounts about their psychology that will help you very quickly dial in your message to, you know, make things more effective. You know, you may be running ads. You almost certainly have a website today. You know, it may not need to be redesigned. Uh, I had a client last fall, a software startup that... Uh, we didn't redesign their website, but we changed some of the words on it. And then we gave them a new sales presentation. And, you know, over the next four months, they tripled their number of qualified leads and their lead quality went way up too. They started closing deals they never would were able to close before. Um, you know, so, so, you know, when you get your message right, it can make a world of difference. Uh, a lot of the tactics that you're doing today become a lot more effective. Um, and you start to see things working together. And, you know, once you have that kind of core message, right, sales and marketing work together much in, in much closer alignment. You find that your sales team is more successful. Uh, you find that the company is more motivated. Morale improves. Uh, people go to work actually knowing why they're there and the difference they're making in the lives of customers. Um, you know, the, the, oh, I'm convinced that why is so important. It is. I'm convinced that marketing, yeah, the why is right, so important. It is. It's the spiritual heart of the company. Um, you know, it's the thing that takes uh, an, 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 an animate object, a, you know, stale brand and brings it to life, makes it a three dimensional character, uh, makes it the kind of per the, the kind of uh, person or the kind of character that people will go to war for uh, and will, you know, evangelize, uh, uh, you know, with incredible word of mouth and, uh, you know, keep talking about and stay engaged with, um, you know, th these things that we talked about, very simple questions, right? Who, how, what, why, and especially that why, um, are the thing that, you know, captivate people's em em emotions, capture their imagination. Um, it taps into, you know, fundamental truths when it's done well uh, that, you know, can create yep. a company that will outlive uh, any of us. So I, th I think I think that's a great place to, to, to pause. And then when we when we come back, we can start to unpack a couple of those at a time. The who and the why and the what and, you know, the how, like getting getting to some of those 
bigger questions. And, and I think if people start thinking about that and start thinking about what they've said to people and, and just asking like some of their customers, yeah, why they do business, what about the company, what about, right? And make it more about the company rather than about the relationship. Yeah. You'll start, they'll start to unpack that. Um, and, and this, I, I think this is going to be a, I, I mean, I knew it was going to be a great series just because of how your brain works. But I, I think there's some real practical stuff here that um, business owners can start to use with their existing teams just to, to tweak it, just to get a little bit better and, and yes. as they do this. Yeah, I mean, you know from the uh, facilitation you went through, uh, I have a framework for kind of understanding what the customer's psychology is. That might be something interesting to talk about next time. There are six questions that business owners almost never ask of their customers that are kind of the core of, you know, they're, they're probably 80 to 90% of what makes an effective ad or an effective website. Uh, and when you have the answers to those questions and you can draw them out of your customers, uh, it's almost like getting them to write your marketing for you um, and to, to clarify your message for you. So uh, I'll look forward to diving into that next time. Awesome. So um, again, thank you. Uh, if, if, if people are like, don't want to wait, they want to yeah. reach out to Matt, um, yeah. the best way to reach out to you is through the website, LinkedIn. What, where, where, where's your preference? Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Matthew Anderson's out there, but uh, my website is uh, Zegio Marketing Solutions. So it's uh, Z-E-G-G dot I-O. Uh, tried to keep that address nice and short. And uh, you can book a, a call there, uh, you know, 30 minutes, happy to talk with you. And, uh, uh, you know, I guarantee that you'll come away at least understanding a little bit more about your marketing problem. And, uh, you know, if it makes sense to work together, uh, we can figure out a way to do that. But uh, certainly interested to hear uh, who's in your audience and uh, get to meet some folks. So again, that's zegg.io, so, Marketing Solutions, and uh, I'm happy to chat. We'll put that in the show notes again. Again, Matt, thank you so much. And, and next time we'll, we'll, we'll dig a little deeper. Appreciate yeah, that it. That sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. Talk to you again soon. To get your copy of Walter Crosby's new book, the seven critical mistakes CEOs make with their sales organization that stop the company from scaling. Follow the link in the show notes or go to Amazon.com. Thank you for listening to Sales and Cigars with Walter Crosby of Helix Sales Development. For more on Sales and Cigars, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Sales and Cigars, produced by thepodcastproshop.com.